Good morning. Hi, Mayday family. How are you guys doing today? I am excited about today's uh, topic. When you're just when you're just recently graduating from college and you're looking to move into a new apartment, like what type of things are we supposed to be looking for? Um, it was so hard for me, and that's kind of where this video is coming from. What to look for when moving into a new apartment? So whether uh, you are a recent graduate looking to move into a new apartment, move in on your own, or you're recently looking to move out of your parents' house, or maybe you've even been to a few apartments, and moving out and in to somewhere is just the most one of the most stressful things that you could possibly do. You have to like box everything, pack everything, and then you have to like unpack. I freaking hate the entire process. The entire process freaking sucks. So we're not the typical things that everyone knows to look into. We start with our budget and we know, okay, like we're looking into apartments that are within a certain range and within a certain amount. We're actually talking about the things that are so important and so essential, but we don't think about. When I first, I had the hardest time when I first moved out of home because I wasn't really sure what to look for and then I moved into my first place I already signed the lease and it was too late to do anything about it because now I'm stuck in like a one-year lease but let's get started number six on the list is location and I don't mean location as in what area do you want to live in like do you want to live in Dallas or do you want to live in California I don't mean that because that's typical like you're gonna look into what areas you wanna live in. What I mean by location is that particular apartment complex, what's around it, right? So what do you want to be of convenience to you? Like, do you want stores to be around there? So that way, if you have to go to Walmart, you don't have to drive like 10 miles just to get to a Walmart. You can literally go across the street. Do you want like little, like, um, restaurants around so that way it's easy for you to actually go out and get something to eat and you don't have to uh, go more than like two or three miles so the actual location and what's around the apartment complex is actually so essential guys my apartment complex right now is in a really really good location the apartment complex that i moved into prior to this was also in a fantastic location because they had so many things around. There was like a Target less than a mile away here and in my last apartment, uh, a Walmart less than a mile away, uh, a lot of eating restaurants and little small shopping centers less than a mile. Literally, I can like cross the street right now <laughs> and get to, uh, I think it's a Kroger that's there or something like that in all these different like Italian restaurants and things like that. A lot of times we don't think about that. We think about the general location. Okay, I wanna live in Dallas or I wanna live here, but we don't think about the convenience for ourselves. The first apartment that I moved into prior to this one, I didn't think about that. It just so happened to be, there were a lot of things right there less than 0.5 miles away to where I could just literally cross the street. And it's so important because in the long run, you feel like going to Walmart, you feel like going to Target, you don't have to drive a mile to get there. It's like right there. Number five, hidden fees. Hidden fees are the devil of all things, <laughs> of all things. Now, I don't have to worry about that as much in my current apartment complex. In my prior apartment complex, prior to the one I'm living in now, uh, what was happening was every month, in addition to like water and everything I already knew about, they were putting all these other fees there. So they were putting like state fees, like just made up fees, fees that had no business being there. What you really need to do is some heavy research on what fees are gonna be a part of your monthly uh, rent and you need to ask them to be very very specific so if it's just water and electric then that's all you should be seeing on your rent every month water and electric there shouldn't be anything else there shouldn't be like sewer charges like I've seen all type of random and that stuff is random they just do that just because they feel like they can add on and take away from your monthly charges as they see fit so you really really need to make sure to grill them on specifically what's going to be included on your rent every single month as well was they were charging me twice for 
things. It, it was weird, and they would have sewer sewer charge, and it would be like listed on there twice. It was very strange. I hated hated that place actually. But make sure that there are going to be no hidden fees that are going to hit your ass by surprise because you're going to be looking like, what is this? And you're going to be really pissed off about it. And when it comes time to that lease, make sure that you review that part of the lease and you're very clear about what it is that's going to be included monthly. Uh, how much flexibility do they have when it comes to changing uh, those rules on a monthly basis? So that should be something that's included on the contract or on the lease. As far as it will say something like we have, uh, you know, we we have jurisdiction over uh, how the rent changes depending on the economy or something like that. So ask them specifically where that's at, and you want to make sure to review that and make sure that it's uh, it makes sense, right? And not it's not just like oh saying something that's super liberal and it's like oh. Um, we can change it whenever we want and that's it. That doesn't make sense because then now you're stuck paying for who knows what every single month. And four bugs, okay? <laughs> I can't with bugs. I just can't with bugs. My last apartment was infested with ants and it turns out I'm allergic to ants because I got bit by one and my legs swole up and it was swollen for like a week or two. It was the worst. And every time I would call the maintenance so they could take care of those ants, they were like red ants or something, uh, they would come back a month or a month and a half later that like it was just infested with bugs. It was the worst experience. I hate bugs with a passion. They're so freaking gross. Oh my god, they're so gross. Uh, so I can't when it comes to bugs. If I see a bug here right now, I start yelling like a crazy person as though you know, uh, as though someone were after me trying to like take my life or something. So I can't when it comes to bugs. Make sure to be on the lookout for those bugs, okay? When they're taking you on a tour and you're looking at all their facilities because everything is going to be nice on the outside. And that's the point because they're trying to get you to sign that lease. Look in the corners. Look on the floor. Is there anything on the floor? Even when you're outside work, actually walking through the... the um, actually walking through the apartment complex, look on the concrete floor, are there any bugs that you can see? There shouldn't be. And a lot of, most apartments, I mean, shouldn't have this problem, but look, at, especially when they are showing you like models, look and, you know, do some research on that. Now, another thing about that is ask them because they, a lot of times might not mention it and might not tell you. So if you're on the verge of signing a lease or something or you're thinking of doing it, and they show you the apartment units that they have available and you see one that you're interested in, uh, make sure to ask them if there's any history of like bed bugs. Ask them if there's any history of bed bugs or any type of bugs in the apartment complex as a whole. Has there ever been a problem uh, with that in any of the apartment complex? If so, which one? Get some details on that. If I wake up in the middle of the night and find a, a roach, just like, running across no i can't do it so a lot of times they won't like volunteer that information even though they should and they're supposed to legally and bed bugs are the worst like i've heard some horror stories of people moving into apartments and the person before them had like bed bugs or two years ago or whatever now they have it they have to get rid of all their stuff roaches are the worst for me especially the roaches that fly i can't deal i would die <laughs> Number three on the list, so essential, I can't even. Maintenance, okay? Maintenance is so essential when you're living in an apartment complex. You need to make sure that their response time to maintenance requests is either the same day or the very next day. The last apartment complex that I lived in, they would take about two to three days to get to me. This apartment complex is on point when it comes to maintenance and I've submitted so many maintenance requests for all type of things like little things, big things, it doesn't even matter. And I have a short patience and, and, and it's just like, so if they're not responding, I get frustrated very quickly and very kind of easily and I try to mitigate that but 
they should be responding on that same day. Literally, maintenance should be coming out to your house or your apartment uh, on that very same day that you put in the request, except if you put it in after work hours, then they should be coming out the very next day, like in the morning, to attend to that maintenance request. Because if something breaks or if something's not working or whatever, like you don't want to be sitting there waiting two or three days for them to respond. Who has time for that? Okay, they need to like come in and fix whatever that problem is because that's the point. That's what you're paying for. That's why you're living in, a, in an apartment because they can fix those things and that's what your monthly rent is for. Like you're not just like giving away money. So this apartment complex actually that I currently live in is really, really good when it comes to maintenance. And literally they'll come in that same day. It's, it's actually quite insane. It's, um, I pay a lot to kind of live here. It's a lot of money and um, it's not free. So whenever I put in a maintenance request or I send an email, I have pretty high expectations and I expect a response. So make sure that whatever apartment complex that you pick is going to be on point with their maintenance because that is not something that you want to start dealing with after signing the lease and it's a month in and your sink breaks or your toilet breaks and you're waiting two or three days for them to come fix it or your AC breaks or your heater breaks and you have to wait two or three days for them to come fix it. They need to come that same day or the very next day that's it. Ask if their maintenance guys actually live on the complex because a lot of times that's like the maintenance guys will live on the actual apartment complex that they work with and that also will give you an idea of whether or not they are fast when it comes to responding. It will frustrate your life to no end if their maintenance isn't on point, trust me. <laughs> number two on this list, can't stress number two enough, management and staff. Oh, oh my gosh, this is so essential. I mean, I almost put it at number one. It's so essential. Management and staff is like the most like essential part of looking for an apartment complex and living in an apartment complex. Um, if the management and the staff actually know what the hell they're doing, uh, because if you have a question like a month, two months from now, from now or whatever it is, and you reach out to management or you reach out to the staff and they, they don't answer, you keep getting different answers from different people that work there, it's going to be so annoying and it's going to frustrate your life to no end. So you also need to figure out what's important to you. When it comes to management and staff, what's important to me is not necessarily that they have all the right answers all the time, because in my current apartment complex, they they don't. I, like Sometimes I have to ask them two or three times before I actually get a resolution to the issue. But what's most important to me is like how professional they are and like their friendliness, because it, it will make me, like the most irritating thing to me is if you're being rude and you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Like I will get pissed off beyond belief. Like my last apartment complex, that guy was so rude. I swear he was, I keep saying this, but he was straight on drugs like every day. Every time I spoke to him, I'm like, you're high again. Mm. So you need to like figure, figure that out. What's important to you? Is it customer service? That's a good word for it. Customer service. That's really what's most important to me. You're going in business with them. It's like a business transaction. It's a business deal. So you need to make sure that the people that you're going in, into business with are people that you can trust, are people that know what they're talking about, and they're people that you can literally just walk in and they will be in the front, you know, like in their little office area, so you can get things taken care of, or you can like send an email and they'll respond that same day. Here's the thing about that. A lot of times when you're apartment shopping, they seem like the best people in the world, like the, the management and the staff, and then once you sign that lease, that's it they don't even give a crap anymore. There's a lot of ways which we'll discuss in a little bit about how you can do research to further really to really further find out if the management and the staff of that apartment complex is actually competent to the degree that you would need them to be in order to get things done. This apartment complex is pretty good because I've had issues and I send emails and even though I'm really hardcore and to the point, I mean, I don't shoot the code, I don't have time, I feel like I pay for this, so what's the issue? It's a business deal, so, um, you know, I don't really, like, I'm not soft when it comes to emails that I send and stuff like that. Uh, and sometimes the emails can seem kind of short as well, but I don't have time to sit there trying to make the email look pretty. Uh, and this, you know, it's, it's a business deal. I pay for this, so um, there's no reason for me to do that. It's, that's how I feel. So uh, 
I've sent emails and they always respond and they'll always respond usually within a pretty reasonable amount of time within that same day if not morning of the next day I've never had an issue with their response rate even if I'm having an issue and they still haven't fixed it yet which that on its own frustrates the hell out of me uh, like I'll still get a response if I send an email and I don't get a response and send another email I'll like I'll get a response so it's not one of those things where they just kind of MIA or they're rude in their emails I've never really had um, or felt like they were rude in their emails and if you're mad they're not going to start yelling at you and make you even more upset you know they need to be professional in that way or in that sense because you're the customer like I said a lot of management and staff when it comes to when you're shopping for apartment complex they're like the nicest people in the world oh my god they're so nice to you they just connect with you they vibe with you and then you sign the lease and who cares no one gives a crap after that you really don't want to deal with management and staff that is subpar and um with my last apartment complex uh it was horrible okay the manager of my last apartment complex i think was literally a dope every day that he was like at work like he literally didn't know what the hell he was talking about ever like none of his answers were ever correct he was rude as hell totally condescending as hell i hated that that man like oh my god that man was like a complete like moron it's like he had never it, he, like it, it's like he was just literally on drugs every day every time i speak like to him every time i went in to talk to him i'm like i'm thinking in my head is this guy high is he on drugs what's the deal um he's just always I and mean, he was just always rude and like he would snap back like i would send an email he'd snap back and say i don't think that's correct that's totally incorrect crazy like i'm just like listen you're you need to like slow down on the drugs obviously so he was totally rude and the staff as a result was like totally rude as well and they none, none of them ever knew what was going on so i would get one answer from one end and then it would be a different answer from another end i just really like the staff and the management there was like if i could rate less than a zero like i would and i have a google review out on them and that now has like I think it's like 15 plus likes because people are finding that it's true. It's like a real review. I don't live leave fake reviews. I lived there for two years and the management and staff were crap throughout the entire time, especially the manager. The manager was crap. Here, I really like it. The guy is like pretty chill and he doesn't get mad too easily, which is good for me because I do. I get like impatient and he still doesn't like clap back or snap back. and. Um, so usually, like here, I'm having a pretty good experience when it comes to management and staff. And it might just be just because the place I'm moving from was so terrible that <laughs> any place could have topped it. But if you have to test them and say, oh, well, I need this or I need to do this before I move in and see what they say, see if they actually go outside of their way to accommodate that for you, at least then you'll get a little bit more information as to whether or not they're able to be helpful to you whenever it is that you might need something the number one thing to look into and i don't know you guys might feel a certain way about this but the number one thing to me for you to look into is reviews <gasps> oh my god and i will say this reviews are number one and priority on my list when it comes to a lot of things a lot of businesses and a lot of establishments reviews especially google reviews you guys read those reviews okay like read those reviews read all of them when it comes to especially if you're about to make the decision on a place that you want to live you get on google google search that that place and read those reviews if that place has no reviews on google i wouldn't even bother i'm sorry i wouldn't live there it's i mean because it's just like i have no way of knowing what i'm getting myself into or i have no way of even getting some information now, if that place only has like two or three reviews and they're positive reviews, then you might want to just rethink that just because the reviews might be fake. 
uh, especially if they're like all four or five stars and there's not a lot of detail in them because now you can pay for Google reviews and they'll actually write out a review and it looks real but the way that you know is there's no details like there's no names you know you could just kind of see and usually there will be no more than a month or two months apart things like that so be careful about fake reviews but if there's only two or three reviews then I would be a little bit more skeptical about that uh, especially because it's not really enough information for you to go by but if you get on Google and there's like six or seven reviews that gives you more to work with right and you can kind of like look at when those were posted how many stars and what people said and then you can get so much detail about that and then there's Google reviews there's like apartment guide reviews um, there's a few, there's like two or three that are like the top four apartment complexes that you need to absolutely get on and uh, read all those reviews, okay? And pay attention to the bad ones. I know that sounds terrible to say, but it's true. Like you wanna pay attention to the negative reviews and see what the negative reviews are saying. Everywhere, I mean, the, it's, it's not that they have a reg negative review, but read what the negative reviews are saying and see if it's something that you care about um, enough to where you wouldn't want to move in there, right? Because the place that I'm living in right now, they had some negative reviews, but it wasn't enough for me to, it's not anything that I felt like would inconvenience me in my life. Um, enough for me not to move into it like it's more like the good outweigh the bad still so read those negative reviews and just kind of weigh them appropriately because um, everywhere I mean there's always going to be some dissatisfied customer somewhere that wants to leave a negative review so when I live reviews I definitely go into a lot of detail because I try to be really really honest about the reviews that I'm leaving uh, and I just try to give people as much information as I possibly can so that way they can Turn around and make their own decisions um, but yeah this apartment complex had a ton of good reviews and it didn't even have like the highest like review rate like review ever but the negative reviews that i saw i think it was like a three point something actually um or maybe like a four like four point something um lower end of the four point something and the reviews that i and that was apartment that was on apartment guide on google and then there's one more that i can't quite think about right now but um i would I'll list it on the description below, uh, and they all of those across the board had at least a, a like a high three point something or like a low four point something, and the negative reviews were not like it. It wasn't like, wow, this apartment had bed bugs. Like once I see that, that's it. It's done. Like I'm not even gonna bother because I don't want to risk losing all my shit. Like actually, like having to like lose my couch and everything. Like I'm not gonna do that once I see that. I'm, like <laughs> it, it only takes one review on Google for me to be like, no, I'm good. So the, none of them were like that. There, I mean, there might have been things like little things that I felt like wouldn't really affect me. So I just weigh them appropriately and um, decide on whether or not the positives outweigh the negative reviews that I'm seeing, and then I'm able to make a, a more informed decision based on that. And the reviews are things like, I mean they're not open after six and I wish they were. I don't care about that, I'll just keep that in mind and make sure that if there's something I need to deal with, just send them an email in the morning or send it at six and know that they may not get to it till the morning, stuff like that. But if it's a review, like for example, on maintenance, maintenance takes forever or maintenance is rude, forget about it. Like, like as soon as I see a review like that, underneath a place where I'm gonna be living for a year or maybe longer, it's done, like, I'm not dealing with that. Or they raise rent for no reason, and every year rent goes up by like $100 plus. There's no reason for rent to go up by $100 plus every year. It should, it could maybe go up by like 15 or $20 or 30 at most, but nothing more than that. Like anything more than that is kind of insane. So I'm like, mm, that's not gonna work for me in the long run. What if I actually like the place? Then I'm gonna have to just move in here only to move out a year later. Thanks for joining me today. Comment, subscribe, let me know what you think, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.